are grateful unto you because of what you are doing at our time in our lives and through us we pray dear father that as we present ourselves as a yielded vessel you will use us for the glory of your name for the blessing of your kingdom and the transformation of this land the nation of america wherein we are in jesus name make us to be to be a beacon light a shining light to the world of our time speak to us as we share together now in jesus name we pray amen thank you so much you may have your seat as we consider together the message the functions of grace the functions of grace many a time we talk about grace 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 but we don't have full the full knowledge the full understanding of what grace is all about as we look at grace we want to see what we want to see what grace means to you what grace means to me what grace can do in your life and what grace can do in my life as we see all those then your life will not remain the same again because you know that you are a carrier of blessing and that blessing will be permanent in your life in jesus name what is grace when we talk about grace we're talking about the mercy of god when we talk about grace we're talking about the kindness of god we're talking about the help from the lord we're talking about the strength from the lord when we talk about grace we're talking about something we do not deserve we do not qualify for but which out of the mercy the love and the passion of god he made available unto us so, and all these provisions of god the provisions of grace uh, are all encompassed in christ jesus and that is why somebody said grace g r a c e represents or means god's riches at christ's expense that is the riches you get the blessings you get that god made available to you and to me is at the expense of christ somebody paid the price when we say the nation of america is the land of freedom do you agree with that is the land of the free the land of the brave but understand also that why you are saying that is a land of the free and that you have freedom and that i have freedom some people pay the price in their millions they pay the price that you and i might enjoy the freedom and the liberty that we have today christ's riches at uh, god's riches at christ's expense now when we talk about grace we are talking about, let me read a few verses of the scripture to you first. Uh, and then it says in Titus chapter 2 verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now pay attention here. I'm going to read that passage to you again and pay attention very closely because it says for the grace of God that bringeth what salvation when you think of that word salvation pause Sila, meditate on it and ask yourself the question what is this salvation all about and when you look at it, you just say, well, being born again is beyond being born again. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, that bringeth salvation, that bringeth, that was salvation, deliverance, because that is salvation also. The grace of God that bringeth solution, that is salvation, solution to your problems. To your situation the grace of god that bringeth healing if you are sick you are saved from that uh, the, uh, the the aftermath of the sickness and the disease and the affliction and the oppression and the torment of the enemy you are saved from it but then it is 
healing that came. Now, the grace of God that bringeth, that was salvation, freedom, freedom unto you, liberation unto you, release unto you. Now, look at somebody now, looking at that, the word deliverance that I mentioned earlier on, because when we say salvation, look beyond the theological understanding of salvation that you have look deep into the riches because when you talk about riches you're talking about wealth the, the, the wealth the depths of the words of the lord and then when you think of that salvation think about the need in your life the challenges in your life the things you want god do, god done for you do for you and then look at the ability of god for the grace of god i show you Grace is unmerited favor, unmerited mercy, unmerited kindness from God that is coming God's riches at Christ's expense. He paid the price. Now, look at somebody that fell inside an ocean. And now, the person is drowning. And then, you have the divers died into the water to rescue the life of that person. What do you say happened to that person? The person was saved. What do you say happened to that person? The person was delivered. The person was liberated. The person was free from dying. And so, when you look at the word grace, it goes deep is very wide is something beyond your comprehension and your understanding and then when you now look at the christian life of course this morning we spoke about the christian service now you look at the people that you say ah, we don't have people to serve we don't have people to do this and even among those that are serving they are not doing it with all their hearts. They are not doing it with all their strength. They are not doing it with all that they have. Why? Because they lack the grace of God in their life. Am I communicating? Now, the Christian life, the Christian walk, the Christian journey, as we live on daily basis, you see some people, you're wondering, are they really Christians or they are not? Are you wondering, are they cold or lukewarm? You really can tell they are not hot for God. But are they lukewarm? Are they warm? Where are they? Are they cold? You are not sure. The reason is, they lack the grace of God. The grace to live the righteous life. The holy life, the pure life. So when we talk about the grace of God, we're talking about God's righteousness at Christ's expense. The righteousness of God, because when you have that grace, nobody is going to force you to live the holy life. Nobody is going to tell you that Christians don't tell lies. Nobody is going to tell you that Christians don't commit immorality. Nobody is going to tell you that Christians don't smoke. Nobody is going to tell you that Christians don't do bad, evil, terrible things. The grace of God will make you to know. When you have that grace of God in your life, the grace will make you to know that a child of God will draw the line between the world and Christ and God uh, between the dressing of the world and the dressing of a child of God between the relationship with the people of the world and relationship within the body of Christ the grace of God the grace of God the grace of God will make you to know that I must be a blessing to my fellow human being and in my relationship with people I must do it as if God is here right now the grace of God for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that bringeth salvation, has appeared to all men. It's telling us that this thing is available. We have it, and the world needs it. And we are the agents, the representative of God, the ambassador of heaven, that will take this grace and give to the world. I need an amen there. 
because the earnest expectation of the world of the, this generation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But we are in the hiding. We are not making ourselves known. It will change in Jesus' name. The grace of God is talking about God's resources for Christians' enterprise. Again, we talked about the Christian service. What's the service? The enterprise. The grace you need to serve the Lord diligently, passionately, heartily, to give to God. You know, some people, when it comes to giving to God, they, they think they are doing God a favor. You're not doing God any favor. Amen? They think they are doing the church a favor. You're doing the church no favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Because the, when you have the grace, you will understand the Bible says, give, and what's going to happen? It shall be given unto you. You will understand that when the Bible says, go and sow a seed, God is having in mind what? Harvest, I told you before you forgot. He's having an harvest in mind. If you have the grace of God, you will have an understanding that yes, you have a seed in your hand, and somebody said this, I think, uh, is it one of the places we attended earlier uh, recently, that when you have a seed in your hand, you can trample under the seed. But when you plant that seed and it germinates, it becomes a tree. Can you still trample under a tree? No. You have to climb on, on, on top of a tree. Praise the Lord. So when you have the grace of God in your life, you know that whatever God has given you is to be used for God's glory. And that when you leave it in the hand of the Lord, it will be multiplied. And so you don't have to force anybody. That's why we don't compel people here about, uh, hey, pay your tithe, pay your offering. If we ever remind you, it's just paraventure you do not know. But we don't force anybody. Because like I always tell people, with you or without you, God is going to do what he's going to do. I need a better one. So I don't have to force anybody to do that. All I need to pray is that, Lord, reveal your grace unto this individual. So they will understand that they're not hurting anybody but themselves. Amen. What is that grace? The grace of God that has appeared unto all men. It's talking about now God's reward. God's reward at Christ's expense. At Christ's expense. And so, let's uh, come down a little bit to a few more passages of the scripture. Please open with me your Bible to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. It says, let us, Hebrews 4 10, let us, you and I, all of us together, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and what? Find grace to help in time of need. That's why I told you that grace is unmerited help, unmerited favor, unmerited mercy from the Lord. That means any help you need to get anything done, to accomplish anything, they are all available in and through the grace of God. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, Hallelujah. If you are there, just say amen. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, I'm waiting for somebody to get there. Because there is, there, there is something profound I need to mention. And he said unto me, if you are there, say amen. Very good. What did he say? My grace, my grace, is sufficient for you. It's sufficient for you. I don't care what you're going through in life. When you have the partnership with God. Now, well, if you look at the text you read this morning, from Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
by the message of God that you do what? That you present your body a living sacrifice, uh huh. Holy. Pay attention here. If you are going to be a beneficiary of this grace we're talking about, the first thing is to make yourself available unto God. Yield yourself to Him. Submit, surrender yourself and your life to Him. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to be called a worker in the church. It's not enough to be able to read the Bible passages. It's not enough to say, I can pray. It's not all prayers that get answered. But when you and the Bible want for us to tell us that this is your reasonable service. Is that what your Bible say? Amen. When you yield yourself, you yield your life, you commit your time, you commit your treasure, everything unto the Lord, and uh, you become a blessing. And then every other thing will be happening unto you. What does that mean? The presence of God will be there with you. Amen. When the presence of God is there with you, the grace of God is there with you. And anything you are going through, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace, my presence is sufficient for you. Many years back, not too many far back, one of the former presidents of this country, actually President Bill Clinton, um, had a friend who had been trying to get a contract in a particular country. And it's been very tall and difficult. And because he's a friend to this individual, the individual spoke with him. And then uh, President Clinton, no more a president at that time, went with him they flew together to that country he didn't get involved in their business contract just his presence alone. what did i say just his presence alone the president of the other country this is president clinton contract signed amen on their way back initial gift to clinton 50 million dollars Amen. I was waiting to hear the rest of the story to know how much total. But I never get to hear that. <laughs> Praise God. They steal that from the rest of us. Only them and the IRS know. Because they must declare. Now, the point I'm making is this in particular individual having trouble getting that contract of course you can tell that that is going to be multi-billion dollar contract amen if somebody's just going to get a temporary uh, temporary gift of 50 million <laughs> amen thank you thank you for coming with me amen a a human being could serve that purpose now talk about god's presence Am I communicating with somebody? That's what I'm talking about. Understand the concept of this grace. If you understand, you will not live like a normal, ordinary human being. Somebody said, I am an ordinary person, but serving an extraordinary God. Amen? I'm a natural man. But working with a supernatural God. That is what grace will do. My grace is sufficient for you. You're going through a crisis, the grace is there. There is a sickness in your body right now, and the doctors does not know what to do and what to say about it. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace. My grace. My grace. My grace. Some years back, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Our church over there, I went to minister. I'm not sure what happened, but I finished ministering that particular day. And I had to rush to the airport. And as soon as I finished, stepped down from the pulpit, got out there. Of course, the pastor came out. And then 
this particular individual rushed out also. I guess he knew maybe. Maybe they announced that I had to leave immediately. And then he came out and he said, Pastor, I know you have to leave. But please, I'm not going to take your time. He said, and this is, pay attention here. This is a medical doctor that has been practicing for many years in this country. He said, I have been diagnosed with cancer. Pay attention to him. He said, well, Pastor, you know, this is my field. We know that the medication we give to people does not work. Except God steps into it. And so he said, I'm not going to take it because it destroys more than the help it does. He said, but I know God can do it. So please, before you leave, pray for me. Pray with me. We stood out there, outside of the church, and we prayed unto God's glory. It's been over 10 years now. He's still bouncing in the Lord. My grace, when you have the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the presence of God, is more than any other thing. I don't care what the problem may be. Though we've been tarry for a night, joy will come in the morning. Amen? Joy will come in the morning. And so it says, my grace is sufficient for thee. Look at this. For my strength is made, what's the next word? Perfect. In what? You are weak. But with the presence of God, Everything is all right. You don't have money in your bank accounts. But how the need of your life will be taken care of? God will raise up all that will fund it for you. For my strength, now you see the presence now brings the strength. My strength is made perfect in weakness. I must have told you this before. There was this particular lady in our church. Oh, wow. I don't know why I'm talking about Georgia today. This is Georgia again. People in her family were dying of cancer. Dying of cancer. But this woman knew the Lord. And she said to herself, Yes, this is going on in my family, but I am an exception. Now, she didn't come to me for prayer, go to anybody for prayer. She just looked at the Bible and she just held on to the promises of God that I will not die of cancer. I submit to you. She's late now, but she never died of cancer. She died at a very, very good old age. Because by... By the time she was telling me the story, they were already of age. As a matter of fact, herself and the husband were one of the first members of the church in Atlanta, Georgia, when we started in 1987. And she held on. This one died of cancer, that one died of cancer. She said, no, not me. And she lived to old age, no sickness, nothing. Until when the husband died, Amen. And the loneliness set in. Amen. And it was time for her to go. I said, honey, I will meet you in the morning. I will meet you in the morning. By the side of Eastern Gate over there. I will meet you in the So, without any notice, honey is gone. Time for me to go. And she slept in the Lord. Amen. Turn to someone and say, you will not die before your time. Now tell somebody, I will not die before my time. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So when we look at grace, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. 
You've got to believe all that we're telling you. You know, some people they come to church, they think it's just about uh, uh, motivational speaking. It's beyond motivation. It's beyond arousing your emotion. It's instilling faith into you. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is. What's the next word? It's a gift I receive in Jesus' name. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Receiving is been given out. If you feed yourself with fear, you will live in fear. If you feed yourself with faith, you will live by faith. And impossibilities become possible in your life. Amen. And I tell you, if you are here today, and you are looking for a job, go out. Before the month is over, you are getting the job. Amen. If you are sick here today, hear the word of the Lord. You are healed now in Jesus' name. I'm not speaking all this to make you feel happy or to appreciate my preaching. I'm speaking the word of life. I'm speaking life into your life. Into your life. And as you receive it, you possess it. So, what does grace do? Grace redeems us from sin. Because Ephesians 1 7 says, In whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It redeems from sin. Number two, grace relieves our fears. You know, the, the, the song Amazing Grace. It's amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now, hallelujah, I'm found. I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. That is what grace does. That is what grace does. And grace releases our fears. The world in which we live today is full of fear within and fear without. The fear of the past, the fear of the present, the fear of the future. The fear of living, the fear of dying. The fear of the youth of our time. The fear of all kinds of fear. The fear of failure. The fear of disappointment. The fear of divorce. The fear of backsliding. But listen to this. When you have this grace we're talking about, then you'll be able to declare, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen? Psalm 56 verse 3 says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Please look up here. We are all human and there are times in life that fear grips us. It's not a sin to be afraid. Amen? But when fear comes, what do you do? You run to the rock. You run to the one that is able to shield. The one that is able to protect the one that is able to preserve you. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I will trust in thee. Are you there? You are afraid of losing your job? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Are you afraid of losing your children? Trust in the Lord. Are you afraid of your broken home and family? Trust in the Lord. Whatever time I am afraid, fear should make us to lean more on the Lord. To rest more in the Lord. To trust more in the Lord. Grace relieves our fear. It assures us 
that God is able. And in your life, he will do it in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4, verse 14 says, There is no fear in love. When you love the Lord, you know he will not do you any evil. You know how I know? You want me to tell you? He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Towards you. Towards you. Towards you. The thoughts of peace and not of evil. To bring you an expected end. Amen. Amen. When you are sure of that, no matter what betimes, understand God is with you. God is on your side. On your side. Faith reassures us in times of danger. When there is danger. Hallelujah. You know the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, the, because the world we live in is full of danger here and there. Amen. Through many dangers, toys and snares that we have come. It was grace that brought us safe thus far. That's, I'm quoting that from the Amazing Grace song. The second, uh, the third stanza therein. Amen. He said, and grace will lead us home. I said, and grace will lead us home. That's what the writer of that song says. We've come through a lot of trials, troubles, dangers, difficulties. Samuel, was it Samuel? Yeah. He got the point, he said, this is our Ebenezer. He that to God has helped us. And the one that brought us this far will lead us all through. And that will make me to say that in the name of the Lord, you will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter. You will not backslide. You came to the Lord to serve him to the end. That which you had in mind from the beginning will be accomplished in your life in Jesus' name. Yes, trial within, trial without, opposition, persecution, whatever betides, the Lord will keep you through to the end in Jesus' name. And then you are hearing of uh, COVID-19. And you are hearing of uh, data variants. And if you are listening to the news, like I do, now they are saying that we have lost more people in 2021 than we lost in 2020. Did you get that news? And over there in Montgomery County, they have now reinstated face mask. They said, take it off. Now they say, put it back on. Because things are getting worse. But he will watch over you. If you don't mind, open your Bible with me. To where I have my assurance from. The book of Psalm 91. Amen. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely. If you care, you can say amen when you feel like but when you don't feel like he does help me to say it for me. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Not for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, somebody say, but. Somebody say, but. It shall not come near me. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee 
neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he, pay attention here, verse 11, shall give his angels charge, instruction, command over you to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. That makes me to know that you will not die young. Praise the Lord. You will live to full age in Jesus' name. No sickness will kill you. No infirmity will kill you. Amen. Faith redeems. Faith relieves. Faith reassures. Faith rewards. Here in time and in eternity. Because faith reconciles us with God. You know, Jesus before he left, he said, in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, what are they? There are many mansions. Pay attention here. Those mansions have name tag on them. Hello, somebody. What do they have on them? Name tag on them. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. For you. A mansion for you. When you get over there, please pay attention here. I don't know about you. When I get to heaven, I'm not going to be going into a condo. Hello, somebody. Where is my portion? In the mansion. Uh, I, do, do you know what is called mansion? Mansion, mansion. Huh? Very he, gigantic. Huh? Give me another word for B. Humongous. Praise God. You know, I've, since, I, I've been to some houses that I was wondering. Is it the whole community living in this house? Amen. He said there are many mansions there. Mansions. I didn't say it. Who said it? It's the Lord. If it is not so, he wouldn't say it. Amen. But please pay attention here. If you want to get to that mansion, this is what a lot of people don't understand. Salvation will get you to heaven. Are you paying attention? Salvation, holiness, purity, righteousness will qualify you for heaven. There is no question. But service will qualify you for mansion. You hear, read your Bible very well. There are people that will just get crown. The crown of righteousness. Huh? The crown of salvation. But there are others that will have stars. Stars all over. Have you seen generals in the army? You see all those things, the decoration. Amen? That is what grace can do. That is what grace can do. Every day you live, think of the grace of God. Anytime you go through any challenge, go think of the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. And say to yourself, his grace is sufficient for me. Hold on to that. That grace will revive our spirit. Amen. That grace will restore our victory. We lost it in Eden. We are getting it back in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. That grace will renew our hope. Will renew our hope. 
and wrap it up for this. That grace will rescind our cause. Because the Bible tells us that Christ Jesus has been made a cause for us. That then means no weapon that is formed or fashioned against you can prosper anymore. Amen. And anyone anywhere placing cause upon you is wasting time. Because you are a blessing. A channel of blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. My life possessing, my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. Understand again, God's riches at Christ's expense. We are going to pray. But before you pray, don't just rush into prayer. We're talking about riches and wealth. Look at this great God and his wealth, his riches, his glory, his majesty, Look at the small you and your needs and your problem and your challenge and your sickness and your failures and your disappointments. And then let there be divine connection. Amen. Key into the word of the Lord. Because before you leave here today, your burdens will be, will be dropped at the feet of the cross. Let us pray. Break, 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 break! Sorry! <laughs>